Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons. And today we are covering Dick. One, two, three, four. Welcome adventurers to the Dungeon Cast. Hey Will. Hey Brian. I'm leading this one, How baby. Oh, the turns of tables. <laughs> Welcome to. I'm, let me just fucking rotate Teach this shit. Teach me yeah. some Dungeons and Dragons, Brian. I will, but. Lecture me. Let's let's do some Dungeon Cast lore. Welcome to episode 300, everybody. Yes, welcome to 300. Thanks for hanging on this long, guys. Thanks for hanging on. That was a great strength saving throw you made there. That DC was pretty high. <laughs> indeed, indeed it was. No, this is a good show. Was it strength or was it constitution? I feel like it was almost an endurance. They probably thing. had to roll alternatively until we get to this episode, honestly. <laughs> they had to roll an intelligence save because of all the knowledge we were pouring into their brains. Those of you who have failed have uh, left your fingernails in the wall of the crevasse we shoved you in. Yeah, like, exactly. Like in uh, Silence of the Lambs. Oh, gosh. <laughs> also came up last episode. That's the new Pirates of the Caribbean is Silence it's of the a, Lambs yeah, on the okay. show. It's You're the Fiend. Welcome to season three. Yeah. What's that guy's name? Um, that um, wonderful actor. I'm, I'm, oh, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins. Yeah. Uh, this episode. Clarice. This episode goes out to Anthony Hopkins for no reason. In he's, particular. A, he's a fantastic actor. He sure That's is. That's the only reason we need. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a demon lord. Yes. And this year of the fiend. Yes. Uh, Dagon. Yes. As we introed. Fun fact, just real quick, going to throw this out there before we even get into anything D&D. Dagon is a genus of butterflies. How's South it pronounced? America. Is it pronounced the same? Or I is think it like so. Dagon? Dagon. Da, da, damn it, Dagonzo. <laughs> He's back at it again. He is. He is back at it. Joke came prematurely. We'll do it again at the short rest like we used to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> historically, Dagon was worship. Oh, you ready to get into this? Shit? I am. Yeah. Tell me all about Dagon. What are we starting let's, with? Let's talk about not D and D. Let's okay. talk about Amer- uh, American Dagon. history. Jesus Christ. Well, it is part of American literature history. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but first, we're going to talk about world history, ancient history. Oh, yes. Dagon yes, was yes. a god worshipped in ancient Syria. Interesting. Worshipped across the center of Euphrates in cities like Tutul, Terga, Mari, and Imar. I'm pretty okay. sure I pronounced all those correctly, but maybe not. Sure. Is this Let like ancient Babylonian? Is This this feels Babylonian. Uh, I'm going to go look it up. You could, you yeah, could yeah, yeah, yeah. In certain areas, he was regarded yeah. as the father of the gods, uh, lord of the land, the god of prosperity, and a source of royal legitimacy. Like, literally, people from this era would use Dagon to like inflate their royalty or make it legitimate. Okay. Like, I'm endorsed by Dagon, basically. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> um, he, um, okay, so ancient Mesopotamia. So yes. this is like the Mesopotamic gods. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I'm about to get into that. Okay, cool. Uh, he is generally regarded as, regarded as a popular deity of the time. He was also worshipped in parts of Mesopotamia and the Philistines. Okay. Uh, although the latter of uh, there is not proven with extra biblical evidence, so it's just some Bible shit in there. Oh, the letter um, of these is not king. proven with it. No, I, I I think it's saying here that it's not proven because there's no biblical evidence. Right, that exa- talked about exactly. It. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what that's what. Yeah. It means. So, so there's a lot of drama surrounding Dagon in terms of relationships with fellow deities, similar to our Nine Hell speed run that reads a bit too complicated to get into um, this episode. Okay, um, it's just a lot of like. Dagon married this god, and this god is friends with this one, and that, this one that's hangs in out. Actual mythology, yes, in okay. real, real world mythology. From what I could tell, Dagon's a total slut. Reading. Dagon is no, I don't know what <laughs> Dagon's getting up to. I was like, wow, they're really getting into it. I'm gonna, I can't, I can't. Okay, wow, it was like General Hospital, uh, Mesopotamic Gods edition. Pretty that's much, that's okay. what it kind of looked like at a glance. Okay. Wow. Um, and I, I was immediately, I'd like, watch that show. I'd watch a drama <laughs> about Mesopotamic gods. We need, uh, we need a gods <laughs> deity series of. Of, uh-huh. like soap operas basically yeah i'd watch them all <laughs> <laughs> let's fast forward to hp lovecraft that dirtbag all right all the way to <laughs> the 1920s yeah let's do let's it go. let's great depression up <laughs> uh dagon in the works of hp uh in the works of hp lovecraft is a deity who presides over the deep ones okay. uh the deep ones are an ocean dwelling race on earth that like to mate with humans and cavort with humans and things like that they mm-hmm. make deals with the locals to keep fish plentiful so i think that means they keep the fisheries kind of yeah, away from those yeah, regions yeah. and have a supply of gold artifacts with unearthly designs yeah. and they love their papa dagon mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the deep ones can reach enormous sizes which comes along with great age reaching heights over 50 feet or 
Oh, oh sorry, I forgot. Fifteen point four meters <laughs> tall. Ah, uh, yes, the oh, tables God. have indeed turned. Dagon is. I was a like, deep... wait, I got to do something. So Dagon, <laughs> Dagon is one of these deep ones, apparently. Okay, okay. Uh, which is why I mentioned them first. He's and like the king of the deep ones. Basically. basically, he's of the greatest age and massive proportions of deep ones. Okay, so he, he gets probably the biggest... eats anybody who rivals him. I don't know is, what they don't that's really. What I would do. They eat fish apparently. Like, aren't they kind of fish? They are kind of fish. They look a lot like. Okay, so let's talk about what Dagon looks like before I talk about what Dagon looks like, which is like he's a big <sighs> fish man. Yeah. He, yeah, 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 yeah. Outside of D&D like artwork depictions, he looks like a Kuotoa. Like if you side by side them, but he looks like a big, strong, mighty Kuotoa that it, doesn't have like, like a Kuotoa or like wrists. a Sahuagin. Cuz I, I like a Kuotoa. Like a Kuotoa. Yeah, like wow. the face is just a fish a fish head. Okay, that's interesting. So they're like blip dual poop. But there are lots of iterations of Dagon. Hey, I got that, that in one go. You didn't. You even, did. Yeah, yeah blip dual poop. I actually <laughs> had to read about blip dual poop for this. Oh yeah, for sure. Because uh, Kuatoa are worshippers. But we'll get to yeah. we'll get to that. Who's in love with Dagon? There's a lot of people in love with Dagon. Almost everybody, actually. I kind of like Dagon. I like Dagon. He's pretty cool. He's uh, Demogorgon's best friend. Shout, Shout out, out to, to Demogorgon. Demogorgon. Uh, he is uh, Dagon is the deep one of greatest age and massive proportions. As far as I can tell, actually he might not be. We'll get into that. To, worshipped by both humans and deep ones, he is apparently immortal. Mm -hmm. This may be due to his relationships with beings known as Starspawn, a.k.a. the Cthulhu, which are a species with similar physical form to Cthulhu, although I imagine they are smaller than the Cthulhu and in greater number. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the great, that yeah, uh, they sometimes select a species to protect and empower for reasons known only to them. Dagon is likely the beneficiary of these evil boons. Mm, evil boom. Yeah, so they just grant like they fuck around with whoever they mm. think is worthy, and mm. it grants them evil boons. So I think they just gave a deep one like Dagon be became Dagon because he got old and more powerful. Right. And the older you are, and the greater you are, the the higher ranking you are in H.P. Lovecraft's world. I yeah. guess. Yeah, that's kind of how it works for the most part. <laughs> H.P. Lovecraft's Dagon was likely inspired by the Dagon worshipped in Mesopotamian times. Uh -huh. uh, historical deities like this were common inspirations for Lovecraft's work, such as the visage uh, of Nearlarthotep Nia appearing as an Egyptian pharaoh. Mm -hmm. If you want to know more about Lovecraft version of Dagon, you can check out uh, The Shadow Over Innsmouth. Or the uh, short story Dagon. The short story um, I, I would go as far as to say is it's very likely that Lovecraft didn't really actually read much about Dagon. He probably just liked the sound of the word. That that kind of seems like how he like he he, he went he, to like an exhibit where they had like Mesopotamian gods and right. he's like ooh that one that's a big fish yeah man. and also his literary approach um he he's very like uh, about mouth feel like what is this how does this word make me feel not so much what does it mean and that's like kind of how he's he's very flowery and visceral in the way that he like he writes and so I that. Obviously, I'm speculating, but I would bet you he just liked the mouthfeel of Dagon and was like, I, I I'm going to do something with this. I think you're right. And a yeah. uh, uh, point of order uh, for people that are going to be already mad that we've said Dagon a bunch of times. Oh, is it Dagon? A lot Dagon. of people in our field have said Dagon or Dagon. Okay, what are we saying? I'm saying We're Dagon. We're saying Dagon because I've the Mesopotamian version is D-A-G-A-N in pronunciation. Yeah, sure. So but Dagan. like also like the... the... The enunciation difference between Dagon and like Dagon, like it's, it's, it's minimal. So slight, but we're it's gonna minimal. we're gonna hear about it. <laughs> we always know. do. We hear about it on stuff I would never expect to hear about yeah, it on. That's true. Okay. Uh, All right, well, uh, oh, it seems like you have more here. One about more thing before missions. we get into D and D. Yeah. There is a metal band called Dagon, based out I'm of little, Lansing, I'm Michigan. Them up on Spotify. I did. Oh, on Spotify, I yeah. looked them up. Their lyrics. Uh, they write lyrics with nautical themes that contain supernatural elements, so it's an obvious direct inspiration. Their website specifically mentions that they are not to be confused with Dagon from Dallas, Texas, which is either some kind of event hall or a person fucking around on Facebook. Okay, I think <laughs> I found them. What kind of metal is it? I don't know. I didn't listen to it. Well, I, but I, I would play it, but that would ruin the show. So. It would not be good for the podcast to play uh, Dagon from Lansing, <laughs> Michigan right now. But let's let's put that on hold. Maybe that's a short rest activity we could Sounds do. Sounds good. All right. Uh, I don't know where to short rest here. Maybe I'll do it after this next part, which I've titled Dungeons and Dragons and Dagon. Um, yeah, sure, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that might be a good place. Uh, and finally, 
the Dagon we're all here for, the Prince of the Depths, the Purveyor of Terrifying Shadow Sea, the Ruler of the 89th Layer of the Infinite Abyss, and Dima Gorgon's neighbor and best buddy. It really, he really is. They re- he, really he really is. is. And everybody, it turns out, everyone and their fucking mom wants to be Dagon's best friend. Because he's just like a super genius, right? He's like a super genius and he's incredibly helpful. He's like, an. they treat him as a sage and oracle. I'll, yeah. We'll get into that too. Yeah. So Dagon has appeared as a giant grotesque sea monster <laughs> revem- resembling a combination of octopus and fish, a foctopus, if you will. Oh. Count, countless black tentacles jut from his body, rubbery and dotted with red, unblinking eyes. I should note that his eyes in his face are red. Uh-huh. Uh, this implies that Dagon enjoys the burning, salty sting of ocean water. Okay. Because he does not close that <laughs> He's shit. He's into like, it. yeah, He's give that shit to me. I'm never closing these bad boys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, uh, let's see. His body is protected by many layers of fish scales. His maw is filled with rows of long, terrible fangs. I imagine what's that creature with the little dangly light? Anglerfish. The anglerfish. Yes. I yes. imagine some anglerfish teeth. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. His maw is filled with the fangs, boasting a length of 40 feet or. or really? Really? You get me <laughs> to the third decimal point? <laughs> or 12.192 meters? I mean, I Googled it. Uh, he is considered one of the fiercest demon lords in existence. He's certainly one of the biggest. Yeah, he's. He, yeah, he is. If not the very, biggest, very, that is known. Big. Yes, 40 feet is quite large because I believe Demon Gorgon's only like. Two and, and a half doors. Two and, a, two and a half doors. That's gotcha. about 15 feet. Uh, all right. Or whatever good. meters. Those um, I think part of that is just age and knowledge. So he's, he's very, yeah, very powerful. Yeah. So like in the uh, the most recent like Forgotten Realms image I found, he's like tube shaped, like a fi- long, like a fish. Oh, okay. And he's That's got tentacles like coming off of him. And he's like, uh-huh. you know, cradling a boat, wreckage. Oh, okay. Like that okay. sort of thing with a big mouth. Gotcha. So eyes all over him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a little crafting thing. Tentacles and eyes and teeth. That's yeah, like yeah, they're just really a mashup of that. <laughs> just put that in any order you want. You got yourself a Lovecraft monster. It is said that when the primordial first arrived in the abyss, Dagon was already creeping, chilling in the deep. Mm. Uh, I bet everyone was like confused as fuck. <laughs> like, who the fuck is this guy, and how did he get in front of us? Hey guys, you guys are late. <laughs> <laughs> There's some speculation that a tear in the multiverse brought forth a version of Dagon from ancient times in Mesopotamia, or perhaps from the universe born of Lovecraft. Oh or yeah, vice they're doing a multi, 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 multi-universe thing. So let's talk about the Shard of Evil a little bit, which maybe you can fill in any gaps. Oh, okay, I have here. this is fourth edition specific lore. Yeah, the Shard of Evil is for for you thing. Yeah, go ahead. Um. We've covered in other episodes, like an mm-hmm. episode of the Abyss, and mm-hmm. anytime we talk about a demon lord and mm-hmm. like stuff with the layers, it comes up here and there. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. it's responsible for the Abyss's infinite layers because it just keeps dropping and tearing shit wide open. I yeah. guess and it was claimed by the demon prince himself, Dima Gorgon, or was to be claimed. However, Dagon rose out of the blood sea to challenge him for no, control. No, bro, that's mine. I want that shit. Who yeah, are you? Yeah. <laughs> that's before Dagon realized how fucking cool and radical Dima Gorgon was. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Dima mm-hmm. Gorgon, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, a battle of epic proportions ensued, and during the fight, Obox Ob, the la- uh, the Oberith demon lord, claimed the shard, that cheeky bastard. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. Oberiths, which we have covered in various previous episodes, also are basically super ancient eldritch demons that predate existence to whatever <laughs> degree that means, because they were existing, and right, the gods right. themselves. Uh, Dagon is thought to be an Oberith as well. Okay, so yeah, there, there's again, this is a device. So everything you read is very specific to Fort Elor. It's not canonical with any other edition. Yeah, um, uh, there's not a lot of historical stuff yeah. beyond the Fort. Yeah, right here. but I will say Dagon did get a lot of like a little bit of special love during Fort E. Like mm-hmm. he statted out in the Monster Manual two block, um, and so the whole shard of evil, like the idea in Four E, is that um, in another universe. They had an abyss there. This is where the Oberinths are from, right? In okay, yeah. E. And in that world, like you know how, like in it was in, like the world before time, right? It, it, no, it was like, it's supposed to be like in another dimension, like a, oh, a totally okay. different universe. But like you know how in D anD D, like there's the blood war and all that other mm-hmm. stuff, and like it keeps kind of the demons in check. Yeah. Um. In this in this universe, it's like the abyss one, right? And once the abyss, you know. Won its blood war, not all the rest of the cosmos couldn't couldn't withstand it, right? So it flooded over. So it flooded the... over everywhere, and it devoured its own universe. Because once the demons had nothing else to destroy, they destroyed themselves, right? Right. And so there was like something like ten or fourteen 
mega Oberyns left and realizing that they were going to lose everything, they concentrated all their energy into a, a single thing they called the Shard of Evil, and they managed to slip it from our dimension into theirs. Yeah, it was like meant for tearing reality. Exactly, open. and it allowed them to cross over, and then, then it led to kind of everything that you just said. And I believe in 4E, Asmodeus is the one who who has it now, and he forged it, forged it into his ruby rod. Um, oh. it's, it's the handle of his ruby rod. In 5E? In, in 4E. Oh, in 4E. 4E oh, only. Okay. Four, 4E only, Lord. I was going to say, guess. I think in 5E it's still falling. I, in 5E, I don't think it exists. I don't think it's a thing. Oh, the, the Abyss is just doing its thing on its own? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but in 4E, that's kind of the crux of the Blood War. It's that the demons want the Shard of Evil back, and Asmodeus is saying, nah, fuck y'all. And so yeah. they're, they're fighting. So when you research Dagon in a vacuum, it seems like you like some of these holes kind of come up. I yeah. So you gotta remember, I've been doing uh, research for the show for a very long time. So mm -hmm. I'm at this point, I'm just so used to like recognizing lore and partitioning it off. Yeah, and, yeah. But like a lot of times, they don't tell you like, hey, this is 4E only. It's not specific. Yeah, yeah you would yeah. have to go to the book. It's from. It's really actually. Yeah. It's very hard to pre track down previous edition citations and actually see it in the writing mm -hmm. on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. D and D is like not super well searchable online mm -mm -mm. i imagine that's going to change in the next couple of years that's why we exist wait that's, don't tell me that <laughs> well i think because of the that there's a new dungeons and dragons movie coming out i'm sure mm -hmm. you know it's got star trek guy in it yeah yeah captain fucking kirk yeah have you seen the trailer did we talk about this already i've seen the trailer okay you've also seen the trailer yeah have we talked about it i don't think we talked I don't about know, it yeah but we should probably there should be gotta do something yeah oh yeah we'll, we'll figure something we'll out. figure something out uh plus there's like lots of Google searching going on. I think we're about to hit a million views, or we're very close to a million views on our first one of our YouTube videos. It's going to hit a million views for the first oh, time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The DD 25. We're like 800,000 yeah, views yes, in it. And it was not like that a couple months ago. No. It was Thank not. you, Stranger Things. Indeed. Uh, okay. Let's talk about Forgotten Realms lore a little okay. bit. Because there's a lot to go through there. Okay. And how long have we been talking? Because now I don't keep track. It looks like we've been talking for about 20 minutes. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. We've got, <laughs> we've got enough time to cover this one, yeah. and then we'll take a short rest. Uh, in Toril, the name of the planet that contains Faerun in the Forgotten Realms, there are waters in the west of Mastika, the largest continent to the west of Faerun, known as the Sea of Fallen Stars. It is, and I th I love this lore for Dagon. Actually, I I usually don't like that super latch on to the Forgotten Realms lore yeah, stuff, yeah. but like this stuff is really cool. So, uh, it is in these waters in which Dagon and his demonic minions reside. Uh, known to the surface dwellers as those who sleep below. Very cool. Very Lovecraft. If you swim in there. The sea. Uh, if you swim in the sea, if there. you swim in that sea, you're gonna get plagued with nightmares and strange dreams. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so if you if you sip the sauce, you're gonna be going to Dagon World when you. Okay, dream. so like, because he lives in his lair, right? Is this is there like a connection between this sea and his lair? There, there must be. It didn't specifically state that. That's it just says that that's where he is in in the Forgotten Realms lore. That he is down there. That's very interesting. Because he's not like a deity in in Forgotten right, Realms. He's right. just like a super powerful. Because in Five E, they're considered deities or a deity adjacent close in no 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 he's a demon lord so he's not it's, it's, it's kind of like a it's like a like a demigod like an offshoot yeah but yeah okay no, no, i think the, he's still like that the whole god here. thing like, is like you require a sliver of divinity which they do not have like asmodeus does have yeah and he makes it clear he took it in this story so yeah. uh dagon sought to overcome the aquatic pantheon of the Forgotten Realms to become a deity in his own right. Oh, okay. first maintaining control of the creatures in the Sea of Fallen Stars. So I'm he's, starting here. He's there. I, I, don't, I don't know how he got there. Maybe somebody could tell me. I don't uh, find that in my yeah fucking whatever. We're gonna get into portal. Dagon's definitely doing some portal shit. Yeah. Um, but he he's just there. Takes that shit over. He's like, I'm oh. here. This is mine. Uh, then with his ancient eldritch magics, he was able to restrict the influence of other deities. The uh, other deities, the Sh Shalarin. Mm -hmm. in the Sea of Coronactix. So basically he puts up some sort of magical barrier of like, because they have this direct tube of like worship equals power for gods, right? Right. He was able to impede that somehow, like basically restrict that <laughs> flow of energy. This. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Shar Shalaran is a, ba oh, basically a, a yeah, they're an aquatic the human. Folk. Yeah, they're an yeah. aquatic humanoid race. They have these big frills on their heads yeah. uh, known as graceful swimmers. Oh, okay, um, they're a species, not a deity. Yeah, they're kind of gotcha. like merfolk a little oh, bit. okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, Deities of the Shalaran. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. So gotcha. basically whoever the Shalaran are worshipping in this other adjacent sea. Uh -huh. uh, next was the create. this is the next part of his plan, was the creation of five wild tides that would sweep many Shalaran 
to the Sea of Fallen Stars. Oh, where so they like would be sucking them in. Where they would wow. be slaughtered by Dagon's minions. Damn. So he basically creates this wild tide, which is essentially a water portal, mm-hmm. like a wormhole, from mm-hmm. one sea to another. Mm-hmm. It sweeps in all these Shalaran, and then Dagon's minions kill them. So that they can't keep worshiping Effectively their gods. weakening their gods. Yeah. yeah, these wild tides were portals connecting ocean realms. He got about three quarters of those fools straight deaded up by his forces before some merfolk step in to contest. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, they're like, hey. We're next. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Like, So he stops, the merfolk step in and stop the slaughter. They're like, okay. you guys need to get away from these wild tides. I'm sure they are a... Um, an incursion Mm -hmm. and they cause madness and stuff like that. And it sounds like there's some sort of riptide that, that will physically like draw them and then pull them in so they can't get out. So every 720 years, Dagon repeated this tactic until the final tide was created and became permanent. This is the fifth tide. So he's Mm -hmm. doing this in in a wave of five. So 3,500 years go by. I see. I see. So the Shalaran knowing the portal, was there kept it secret to prevent evildoers from using it but the mm. ripple effect of Dagon's work cut the Shalaran off from their previous deities so they no longer have that support mm. they became silent leaving the Shalaran to worship whoever was left which was Dagon and mm. this happened in secret throughout the remaining Shalaran communities and grew silently for many years so basically the cult of Dagon took over the leftover survivors of the Shalaran. Yeah, because there was no one else to help them survive. This cemented Dagon as the presiding focus of worship in both the Sea of Fallen Stars and the Sea of Coronactix. Interesting. So that's how Dagon was going about getting his shit right. Okay, okay, so interesting. He's going to sit in the sea and create power. So this is like uh, like aberrants. Um, those are those underwater sea guys. Like, very yep. s- similar vibes I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's definitely that, that kind of that working in secret and secretly corrupting and like causing you to have no no other choices. Kinda. And using his uh his ancient like Obereth knowledge to, to do manipulate crazy reality, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To his advantage. So that's that, pretty cool. That's a that's a, a nice showcase, I thought, of what Dagon <clears throat> is could, capable of could do should he yeah. so want to. It's a lot different from what Dagon's up to in Regular 5e, mm-hmm. which I think we should get up to after the short rest. Let's do it. Thank you, Warden, for letting us out of our prison cells. We really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, after talking to you for a little bit, you make a lot of sense. And, and the things you suggested to me, they, they sound fantastic, honestly. Yeah, so we're, we're full of good advice like that. We sure are, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Now, don't forget to so, go have a sit down uh, right there on the bed. Yes, yes, so. please. Uh, also. Uh, oh, you mean right over here? Yes, exactly. Uh, also, uh, how do we have this place? Oh well, you uh, you go up the hall. Don't worry, there's only one way out. You just you just go up the hall. You'll see you'll see the the main. Don't worry, you'll you'll figure it out. I I have I have some listening to do as you suggested. And I want to get right to it. There's a lot of podcasts here about about 300. It looks like. Excellent, excellent. Let's go, Grimly. Uh, okay. Hey, uh, don't forget to lock yourself in, and then I'm gonna need those keys. Oh, right, of course. At like you suggested, another fantastic idea. Uh, yeah. Here, here you go. Oh, yes, you're almost as suggestible as suggestible, Jeff. Oh, Jeff, he's one of my favorite employees. He's always doing what he's told. So ours, then what he, so ours, too. Uh, yeah, you have you have fun in there, buddy. We'll see ya. Let's go. Shout out to Team Agoka. Shout out to, shout out to, shout out to Team Agoka. Oh, yeah. They said they'd be here like 10 minutes ago, but, um, oh wait, no, th- there they are. They're coming up the stairs oh, right now. Oh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. It's so good. It's suggestible, boy, Jeff. Jeff, you good, sweet God, boy. you're so goddamn suggestible. Did you do the things we suggested, Jeff? Yeah, you, of course I did. Of course you did. You're so suggestible. Yeah, of course you did. You. <laughs> what were those things? Remind us. Uh, okay, well, you told us to, you, well, you told me to open all of the prison cells of anyone with the big Y drawn in it. And I did get that tattoo of the big Y on my arm, oh, like you perfect. asked. Yes. Uh, that was uh, and you and you did tell me to get it here rather than going to a professional tattoo salon, which I did. Uh, Excellent. It was done with a toothbrush and a uh, toilet water ink, and then uh, I it hurt a lot, but it's healing nicely, sort of. And then I am uh, I got your chicken nuggies. Here you go. Oh, the nuggies! Yes, yes they're gonna eat those on the way out. <laughs> Uh, and then did you tell everybody to get 
into the mess hall where we could come pick him up? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Uh, Jeff. You know, it's going to be lonely without you guys here. Jeff, you're coming along, Jeff. You think I, you think I should? Yes, Jeff. I'm down. You're just so, so suggestible. Let's go! It's like everything you guys say. Let's just like, go! Yeah, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> Let's fucking go! <laughs> to the mess hall! To the mess hall! To the mess hall! Where, Jeff, where's the mess hall? <laughs> uh, you know what? Follow me. Okay, yeah, follow we've, Jeff. We've been in here for weeks. So we've never actually seen this place. Hey, wait, Jeff, okay, follow Jeff. Follow Jeff. Nom, 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 chicky nuggies. We've returned. Indeed we have. We're fucking back at it again. God damn it, Daganzo. <laughs> exactly. Shout out to Daganzo. Join our Discord. Indeed. Where, where are... Daganzo is the administrator in chief, uh, chief of staff, if you will. He is the Dagon to our Demogorgon. Really is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and also the, dis- the Discord's nice too. <laughs> yeah. The Discord's great. Um, you can go in there and worship Demogorgon and Dagon and whoever. It's, mm-hmm. it's really all the same at the end of the day. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> you can also uh, support Dagon and Demogorgon by supporting us on, on Patreon. On Patreon. Mm-hmm. And and just by listening to the show or providing an Apple iTunes review or uh, well. an Apple Podcast review. It's not iTunes anymore. Yeah. But they know what you meant. But yeah. You guys know what I mean. You guys are <laughs> smart as fuck. Shout out to Dima Gorgon. Shout out to Dima Gorgon. Uh, Patreon.com slash the Dungeon Cast where you can get episodes of this show one week early at mm-hmm. free. As well and, as uh, extra like, notes, live play character content sheets. That, you also get yeah. live play content, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. actual there's, play stuff. There's uh, exclusive merch at some of the higher tiers. Yeah. Um, and there are changes happening there. We're actually going to record our, our first game of Unhallowed this month, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, which is pretty cool because this episode's dropping a week after we're recording it. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, that'll be that'll be up later, but recorded soon. Yes. Are we exactly. gonna offer the raw on there or no? No. Okay. No. So it'll be give them something this is going to be a gorgeous. full production, actual play podcast, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, written and DM by Will. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Super Quest Saga is ending, and you can get your will fix there. Mm-hmm. It's true. And, yeah, it's going to be, I don't know if you mentioned it, it's going to be a horror slash dark fantasy adventure. I did not, but I should have, and it will be that. <laughs> We're going to be serious on there, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So I'm only going to tell some jokes. <laughs> right, right, right. Let's talk about Dungeons & Dragons and Dagon and Demogorgon, Let's which I it. want on a short, Let's on a shirt, it. on a short, on shorts too. Let's get them on some shorts and Dungeons a shirt. Dungeons & Dragons and Dagon and Demogorgon. Yeah, I'd yeah. pay for that. And on my shorts, on the butt part. Yeah, like, absolutely. Coming down on both sides. Mm-hmm. Each cheek's going to need that. Dagon and Demogorgon are best buddies forever. I would yeah. say five ever even. Yeah, they seem pretty pretty closely connected, and uh, Dagon seems actually fairly loyal. Uh, d- despite their, yes, he is, <laughs> despite their scuffles of the past, uh, they have become good neighbors, reeling over, uh, ruling over the 88th and 89th layers of the abyss, respectively. Mm-hmm. It is rumored that Demogorgon gained great power and influence due to the unspeakable knowledge shared with them by Dagon, uh, being the eldritch horror he is. I feel like, uh, in, in uh, stop me if you don't like this comparison, but I feel like Dagon is to Demogorgon what uh, Dr. Dre is to Eminem. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ba- well, basically, yeah. like that shit doesn't sound good, dog. Let me fucking fix that shit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the gaping maw and the shadow sea are connected with Dagon's lair, one level deeper into the abyss. Dagon is known to provide counsel to each of Demogorgon's heads, which we have covered on previous episodes. Uh, they're e- uh, which are each masters of their own persona. Mm-hmm. Hethrodia and Amayul, one a raging beast of anger and physical might, the latter a more thoughtful and conniving influence of great mental fortitude. Mm-hmm. These personalities will work as individuals in their push for power and influence and will often butt heads, so to speak. Dagon will counsel each individually, controlling the information given to one head in secret uh, to, uh, versus the other. Mm-hmm. So he'll just like psychically, this is how it goes down. Mm-hmm. He just reaches out and is like, Hey, what's up? I think you should do this. Or it's I think it actually is Dima Gorgon reaching out for counsel more often. Right. Like, like hey, he'll talk to him. Dagan, but like he knows what do? to say to both heads. Yes, right. exactly. So Dagon, uh, you know, every demon lord wants to control the abyss and then by extension reality. Mm-hmm. Uh so I think this is Dagon's way in. Is like, you know what? Uh I'm pretty powerful. I'm pretty fucking powerful, but so is this guy, and mm-hmm. this guy trusts me mm-hmm. to the point where I can just kind of like pit them against themselves right so demogorgon's right. constantly at war with themselves yeah but I, I don't even secret of the other head yeah but i don't think dagon is like the reason i think they are no. always fighting anyway but he's they would i think he does like get in there and exacerbate that he yeah. wants demogorgon by extension to be successful because demogorgon's success 
it's Sagan's success. success. Yeah. So, uh, and and further by extension, he's locking everybody else in the abyss out because uh, I will get into this, but uh, everyone else in the abyss wants Dagan's nuts real bad. Oh, really? Like, That's real interesting. Bad. Okay. Actually, I'll, I'll probably You'll get into cancel it right me, now. bro. He's, but I think this. I is... have a tower of science, bro. <laughs> yeah, because I think. <laughs> <laughs> like morning kind of and stuff, they say like every demon lord, this is what they want. They okay. they all want the same thing. Yeah. So they're all warring against each other. Uh-huh. So somewhere deep down, Dagon wants the throne. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Whatever moves he's pushing are to further that agenda. Yeah, he he is a demon. So, so Dagon has a few allies aside from Demon Gorgon, not many, and most notably there is the Alhydra, the princess of evil water. Is it, it like the demon lord of Hydras? No, it's a it's an Archimental. Oh. Uh, so like a, they're the rulers of the like elementals, a, like I a guess. super water element. And I don't know what edition of lore that's from. Sounds fourth edition-y. It does. I'm going to look into it. Archimentals were powerful beings that ruled over the elementals. Uh, she's basically just an evil tidal wave. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she likes destroying stuff with water. <laughs> I'm a tidal wave, but with fucking evil purpose. <laughs> Literally, it's a tidal wave with eyes. That shine like green or with pearls or whatever. That's it's, it's a couple cool. of different. Yeah, I, I thought like so. It. Uh, <laughs> I even wrote, um, what did I write here? She is uh, basically just an evil title with destroying stuff. A cool friend for sure. <laughs> Dagon has I many know. enemies as as many enemies as they do friends, which isn't a lot. Uh, this is mainly due to Dagon's seclusion in the Shadow Sea. They do not often leave this place, and those who have traveled here are now dead, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's there's just not a lot like you go if you make it past the gaping maw which is the main entrance to the the shadow sea yeah like you're probably not in great shape unless no. you did a real good sneak and you probably how are you getting past those six tachitals? they're here too uh, yeah seriously lots but, of them yeah, yeah there's a grip and they st- siphon your max HP away. okay so it seems like old Hydra actually originates from from Greyhawk the Greyhawk setting Ooh, and nice. she seems tied to the elemental evil so I did read back into diff- a lot of different settings yeah, for this. It's pretty cool. I've never uh, heard of Ohaja, but she's my new love. Uh, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> there, <laughs> there's a bunch of uh, Archimentals. So there's mm-hmm. like a whole slew of them for each element. Cool. So I'll, I would imagine wherever, whatever planar area, major error, major elemental plane you have, even mm-hmm. the ones that rub together, you yeah. have one of these. Yeah. That's okay, what cool, it looks like cool, anyway. Cool, cool. Uh, let's see. Many other demon lords regard Dagon as a great sage, as he harbors ancient knowledge about not only the abyss, he was there before its formation, but the ancient I know realms about beyond shit that you'll it. never see in your fucking life. Basically. Yeah. Many will pay homage to Dagon in order to garner this information for themselves, though it, it is seldom given. Dagon will straight tell up Tell us, refuse. Dagon. Tell us about the before times. I won't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bring me more food. <laughs> Dagon will straight up refuse the call of many outsiders, no matter their cause or power. He's like, no, leave me alone. His lair is so volatile that no one can really do anything about it. Yeah. Like, it's like that because he wants people to leave him the fuck alone. It is uh, underneath the... It, okay, so the, the gaping maw is deep. It's very, very deep. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. This is just the, the shadow section deeper than that. beneath that. Yeah. It is so high pressure. Maybe that's the real reason he's paired up with Demogorgon because he's like, look, like I need someone to buffer all these motherfuckers trying to reach out to me. Like I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. So like, you are essentially my guard dog. <laughs> I mean, or vice versa, because the the main one of the main entrances to the gaping maw is mm-hmm. the shadow sea. So they kind of have each other's backs. Like you okay, have to get if you want one, you got to go, go through, through the, the other, other. Unless you like came through. That's kind of how the abyss sort of works. Is like you can kind of get directly into them, but you it have to seems deal like with both of them. Some of them, like it, especially the shadow sea, you, it doesn't look like you really can get there without going through the gaping maw. No, there's no way because it's below it. Right, and then the like direction elsewhere is seemingly infinite apparently like mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. just you just swim into the expanse and mm-hmm. it is without end and that's not good you do not want to be hanging out in there mm-hmm. um well yeah so dagon is worshipped by many ocean dwelling creatures evil in nature typically this includes but is not limited to kraken um uh, chul uh Ch- chul chul Chul. It's Chul. I, I didn't know chul were intelligent enough to worship i'm looking into this continue my thing uh Autocorrected it to chum. Sea hags, <laughs> yeah. water nagas, kuotoa, exitachitals, sahuagin, merfolk, and perhaps even good races that have been tricked into or succumbed to their evil ways. I don't think Chul so much worship Dagon as they like they bend to his will. They they're like uh, they have the intelligence of like a wolf, a five. Yeah, they're so like the way it kind of goes is like if they're there in servitude, it like kind of counts them as like a. 
Yeah, if they're it grants, it grants yeah, power to Dagon. They're like the dogs of Dagon. Kinda, yeah. Dagon Does your dog dogs worship, if you will. not necessarily, but they do Dagon's will. Yeah. So yeah. Dagon has also been depicted as a ten foot or three meter <laughs> tall merman weighing in at two thousand pounds that uh wields a trident but can only move on land by dragging themselves. Okay, so that's straight the Lovecraftian one. This is from the 3.5. Yeah, so the, uh, did I talk about that? The Lovecraftian is just like a big buff. Like, yeah, we, well, no we, one's we, really we talked seen about it. the Kuatoi-ish version. I did also forget to mention that there are deep ones from Lovecraft that are big like that. That um, So the person that is narrating the short story mm-hmm. either saw Dagon or s- mistook them for Dagon. Okay. Because okay. there are other ones that are huge. Oh, okay. But okay, Dagon okay. is the one with the boons. That was Dagon's brother. Do- that was Dagon. Dogen. That was Dagon's older cousin, Jeff. <laughs> 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 Fucking spotlight stealing asshole. Oh, dude, we forgot to play the song, uh, any of these songs from the band Dagon during the short rest. I guess we're. I guess it's a long rest activity <laughs> now. So. Stick yeah. around for that. Yeah. Oh, this long rest is going to be crazy. <laughs> uh, the 89th layer. Oh, let's talk about the Shadow Sea specifically because okay. it's a really cool place. Yeah. Um, it's got a cool name. Yeah, it's got a cool name. We, we have talked a lot about it. It's underneath Demogorgon's mm-hmm. shit, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, the 89th layer of the abyss, known as the Shadow Sea, is Dagon's home kick-ass name mm-hmm. it is a realm completely underwater like demogorgon's lair is some of it's above water because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, you can the brine flats are at the top of the ocean yeah i remembered a, a surprising amount of demogorgon lore this time i would hope I, so. better at this okay. point yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a realm completely underwater with a seabed littered with the ruins of past civilization and wreckages of past failed voyages from the seas above or wherever, however shit is getting in there. There's like mm-hmm. ancient cities down there and That's, ruins. Yeah, honestly, and, it's a common thing across the the abyssal layers of like there being like signs of ancient civilization, and I think that that's because like it's literally other prime worlds that fell to the abyss that got kind of sucked in. Yeah, so we talked about this during yeah. Leviticus. Leviticus. Levi- Levi- Leviticus, Leviticus is, is in the, the Bible. Bible. Yeah, uh, Leviticus did that. He yeah. sucked up that like. Frozen Tundra Town or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is the uh, it is the back door to the 88th layer known as the Gaping Maw, where Demogorgon presides. Shout out to Demogorgon. Depending on the direction you move, it can be seemingly infinite, and we did talk about that already. Also, there is an intense pressure here that only the mightiest ocean dwellers can withstand, including all the creatures I named. Well, mm-hmm. most of them. Mm-hmm. There are uh, certain sections that are so deep that only Dagon knows the true reach of its depth. So hmm. uh, Dagon's. Hmm palace has been depicted in several different ways sorry did you have something no nothing uh ranging from a ruined underwater castle to an amorphous glob of muddy slime that cuts through colonies of sea worms and phosphorescent creatures that skitter across the ocean ocean floor those are very different ways to to depict his palace i know so is it is it this like so there's all these ancient ruins and stuff so Mm -hmm. i imagine like the best and grandest of those buildings are dagon's home or he has like this blob of nasty juice that he kind of just moves through i mean maybe the castle gets covered in in the nasty juice whenever he sheds or whatever yeah i think i think the the castle one was a the was another gray hawk pool oh, okay yeah and, that sounds very gigaxian for yeah sure. and that the more recent lore maybe the foury stuff is the is the goop yeah where they try and go well like well how how do these sea creatures actually live let's just do a really big evil version of that yes so. yeah that both Completely legitimate ways to approach this. Yeah, and I'm yeah. sure they can both exist simultaneously as well. Um, so I believe, okay, I, I already see a typo head because it says great polluted clouds of sentience. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be great polluted clouds of sediment. Oh man, how did that happen? It happens, man. <laughs> well, welcome to doing us for the show. It's <laughs> tough, man. This autocorrect thing on yeah, this. Yeah, uh, it's fucking rough. It, I get the idea, though. Great uh, great polluted clouds of, um, of weight. It's basically just pollution. Like it's just it's just yeah. clouds of pollution yeah. floating through the the layer. Uh-huh. It'll strip the flesh off of living creatures that oh, pass gosh. through it, and it's, that it's that, that, that kind of gets detailed. It's like in uh, that kind of gets detailed, and like so, you have a lot of creatures down here, right? You yeah. have like krakens, exatchetals. Yeah. You've got like uh, and they all got a poop. Yeah, they've all got they've all got a <laughs> shit, and one of them is the wastrolith. Okay, yeah. Which, uh, now waste being in the name, yeah. Like, poop coming very, up on yep. the show. It's just cla- yeah. Classic stuff. Mm-hmm, classic mm-hmm. dungeon cast. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're um. I think we're going to get into that. Will, would you do us the honor of reading the stat block? Okay. Uh, well, let's explain what the Wastrolith is uh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you want to hit that lore at the bottom? That. I so, can do that if you want. Uh, yeah, go ahead. 
Let me. Uh, I actually don't have. <laughs> I don't have the stat. I have it. Up. I can have it. Found up in, a in the waters of the abyss and other bodies of water contaminated by that plane's fell influence, wastrelists established themselves as lords of the deep and rulers of their dominions with cruelty. Wastrelists pollutes the waters around it. That tracks with what mm -hmm. you just said. Right. Its noxious presence even affects nearby sources of water when the demon travels on land. The corrupted water, which contains a measure of the demon's essence, responds to the wastrelist's commands, perhaps hardening to prevent foes from escaping or erupting in a surge that drags victims into its reach. Creatures that ingest water corrupted by wastrelists risk their very souls. Those who drink the poisonous liquid might wither away until they finally die or remain alive only to become thralls of chaos and evil. Uh, to represent this defilement, you can use the optional rule on Abyssal Corruption in the Dungeon Master's Guide, etc., etc. So these guys are known direct servants of uh, Dagon of and homie. dwellers yeah. if, of the Shadow Sea. Yeah. So, so let's get into it. You ready? Mm -hmm. Wastrelith, large fiend, typically chaotic evil. It would be kind of weird if they weren't. Armor <laughs> class 18, natural. They're very hard scaled. Uh, Natty. 157 hit points. They swim... Uh, pretty fast, 80, 80 swim speed, 30 walking fast. speed, which is impressive because I'm looking at these guys that don't have legs. No, they have um, like, uh, you know, reptilian They snake look bodies. like snakefish with, they're kind of feathered too. Their fins look very feathery. Yes, they're, they have They're snakefish birds. Snakefish birds. With hooks for hands. With hooks for hands. <laughs> Um, we got a 19 strength and 18 dex, a 21 constitution, 19 intelligence, 12 wisdom, and 14 charisma. They're high level stuff. Mm -hmm. This um, is a big deal. Yeah, they have a strength saving throw of 9 and a con saving throw of 10. They resist cold, fire, lightning damage, and all weapon damage that's non-magical. Um, they are immune to poison, uh, both the condition and the damage. <laughs> no Great. surprise there. They got yeah. dark vision. Uh, they speak abyssal. Um, they also have telepathy. They're challenge rating 13 creature. They are amphibious, which I think is obvious. We're going to skip that one. But they have their next ability is, is called Corrupt Water. At the start of each of a wasteless turn, exposed waters within 30 feet of it is befouled. Underwater, this effect lightly obscures the area until the current clears it away. Water in containers remains corrupted until it evaporates. A creature that consumes the foul water or swims in it must make a DC 18 constitution saving throw. On a successful save, the creature is immune to the foul water for 24 hours. That doesn't seem how polluted water should work. On a failed save, the creature, <laughs> the creature takes 40 six poison damage or is poisoned for one minute at the end of this time the poison creature must repeat the saving throw on a failure the creature takes uh 48 poison damage and is poisoned until it finishes a long rest if another demon drinks the foul waters in action it gains 2d10 temporary hit points. oh this is the cleric that's of, pretty fucking this yeah is the it's the cleric, cleric the of the D, &D world it's the, it's the shit priest um <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying like don't get me wrong i i I, I understand why a lot of like magical effects is like, hey, if you save against us, you're immune to it. Like especially, especially a wisdom one. Especially right? like, yeah, the fear ones and stuff like yeah. that. But no, if you drink shit water <laughs> It doesn't mean that, and you and you don't get sick. It doesn't mean that you could just keep drinking shit water. Like that's not how that works. <laughs> that sounds Anyways. like a fat argument you have at the table with your players when yeah. the barbarian is like, "No, it's delicious," and fucking fighter Tom is like dying over there yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it just, it doesn't work like that. Anyways, <laughs> they also have magic resistance, so an advantage on spell saving throws uh, against magical effects and spells. Uh, multi attack. The race Rilith makes one bite attack. Two claw attacks and it uses grasping spout. We're gonna get Ooh, to yeah, that. We will. So the bite is a plus nine. It's a reach ten feet. It is forty twelve plus four piercing damage, which ain't, which ain't too shabby. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, the claw is also a plus nine and a ten foot reach. Uh, it gets two of these and it's forty six plus four slashing damage, and that's also quite respectable. It's a lot. So if it's do, it does a bite and two claws, and then it finally does its grasping spout. Yeah, this the thing in one turn with just the multi attack can hit you for what like sixty four damage. Yeah, it's it's pretty fucking damage. It's fucking brutal. The wastrelith ma uh, gra grasping spout. The wastrelith magically launches a spout of water. It uses water gun on you from Pokemon. But also, uh, at one creature, <laughs> it can see within sixty feet of it. The target must make a DC seventy six saving throw. It has disadvantage if it's underwater. On a failed save, it takes forty eight plus four acid damage and it's pulled. So this the spout pulls them. Yes, it it, um, it doesn't use water gun. It spits out the fucking boss from the water temple in Ocarina of Time. Yeah, and it's pulled up to 60 feet towards them so that it could better bite and claw their fucking face. That's right. On a successful save, it takes half as much damage and is not pulled. Um, this guy also has a bonus action called Undertow. Get over here. If, if the waste is underwater and it causes all it causes all water within sixty feet of it to be difficult to rain. Oh, these things just like start su siphoning yeah. water in from the surrounding area and yeah. start making a tide. This thing is a hell of a motherfucker to throw against like your level seven party. Your level seven uh, you know, breathing potion equipped 
Yeah, land like, boys. Like under, yeah, like underwater, they have the let's say they have the water breathing potion, and they're like their swim speed is like doubled because of some magical reason. Mm-hmm. So they think they're all good, and then this guy shows up, and they realize they are not good. They they're are not, not good. good at all. They're not getting away from the. Yeah, you might as well just get up close to it at this point. Yeah. I think it's not. Just, it just wants you there. Tank the bites and the claws. Yeah. So if you're trying to do rain shit underwater, like, because how does how does underwater campaign work with land boys? Like you. To be fair, I don't really know. Brian, because I don't really run that shit. That's it's just craziness because you can't yeah. swing a sword underwater like that, right? Normally, um, so there's got to be like freedom of movement for you under there. I I, I think like, but like yeah. we've covered the the marrow or like what are the playable races like Water Genasi mm-hmm. and like the uh, not Eladrin, but there's the Sea Elves, right? The regular ones. Yeah. So uh, I know one of the lore flavor things is they tend to use uh, like stabbing weapons. Yes, because, because they, they can do that. They underwater. can travel better. But I don't know if there's official rules. So like that maybe for underwater combat. just to be safe, you sh- there probably are. Um, yeah, and we should probably get f- somewhat. We'll do an episode on them one day. That would actually be underwater campaign. The yeah. first one. We've, it's probably sure. two episodes. But, like, yeah, you, you could just give everybody tridents. Yeah. That's probably something, something along those lines. So, yeah, I mean, you you look up the rules and you figure it out, yeah. see what works for your campaign. And Trident party. training. Like, we're uh, we're commissioning mercs from the surface. We'll magically imbue them to do what they need to do down here and be strong. There like you go. Like, how they are up there. Yeah. I mean, you can figure that out. But this, I think this is the closest thing we're going to get to a stat block in 5e for Dagon. Uh, and not I that mean, it's close to us. It's nothing us. like Dagon, but there just no, no, isn't just, a Dagon stat block. Yeah, like in terms of like putting a stat block in this episode. Yeah. This is, like, and it's Year the of the Fiend. Here's a Fiend. Yeah. You're uh, welcome. A really cool monster to not only uh, put, like if you're going to have an incursion in the local lake, this might be a cool boss. Yep. Agreed. It's challenge rating 13, right? Which is, is pretty beefy. Fucking crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a good monster. I like this stat block. And it looks great, what, honestly. What, what, it's from Mordenkind. It's from the Monsters of the Multiverse. Yeah, and we should probably uh, the, so it's new, and the, so but that's it why new? it has that little is well, it new? right? Is it a re- it's it's been printed again? I'm find if out. It's not, I'm and that's probably out. why it has this little chunk of lore. It is not new. There's a legacy version, and this is from Morning Kind of Stomophos. Okay, yeah, it, yeah, it's got its own little lore. So we haven't covered any multiverse stuff yet. Just because there's like nothing original. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So there's nothing original. Somebody, there's, there's just one some lore differences and, and one original monster. Dolphin. Yeah, dolphin delighter. Um. So. It doesn't sound sexual. We're... <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> uh, por- uh, porpoise pleaser. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we aren't going to cover anything out of there, really. Uh, uh, there's length. a couple things. Uh, there's some goblin stuff that's like, we've just drastically changed everything about them. So right. like, we will cover that. I think we should, uh, this episode 300, like the plans for the future, I think we're going to start doing more like reaching out to the audience for we decided we were going to do that right like to mm-hmm. have a hand in which episodes we cover uh that was going to be a patreon thing yeah and and that'll be on our patreon like we're going to start doing some surveys there yes and seeing what people want to see so if you're interested in like we get a lot of suggestions um i think we're kind of through the basics oh yeah between 300 <laughs> episodes yeah, we're absolutely. now now we're like kind of you know yeah. let's let's talk about some grandiose shit like we did all the the gem dragons we're yes. doing all the demon lords yep. and, and devils mm-hmm. in length mm-hmm. you know tell us what you want to hear um and you can you can do that by um going to patreon.com um you can subscribe at any level i'm i was thinking we would open up these um these like voting surveys for anyone that submits any dollar amount on yeah, there absolutely so if you guys want to throw in a buck and get in on it like it'll be a public post to patrons only Mm-hmm. Uh, and it won't matter what tier you're in. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, we're we're gonna start we're gonna start doing stuff like that for patrons. You know, get a hand on the ball. Um, you know, really start uh, bulking up that community a little bit and ha- letting you guys uh, choose like what direction we go. And we do have our plans, and we are gonna basically be like, here's what we want to cover in the future. What do you want to see first? You know, here's an other box. Like, make a suggestion. If we get like a lot of suggestions for something, it'll come up on this on the yeah, survey. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What do you call it a survey? You don't call it a survey. Um, a poll. A be called a poll. A poll. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's all I have on Dagon. All right. Do you I have any you... questions? No, not at all. I think it was well covered, man. You did a good job. Thanks, man. The homie Dagon is really fucking cool. Just some 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 free flow thought on it is uh, I really I really like this monster a lot as like a really creepy like. I'm thinking you do demon stuff and deal with the demon lord, and then like you find the secrets of Dagon later, and you're like, oh shit, bro, right. what's this dude up to? Yeah, yeah. You gotta absolutely. find out about this. He's like, and then you can get into it's a real cool like 
transition from demon stuff to elder god stuff mm -hmm. also if you want to start fucking around with that yeah you can definitely like he fits in a lovecraftian or cthulhu style yeah game if, you, if that's what you want to do I, I feel like we've covered so much great old one stuff and the warlocks and all that mm -hmm. and we've done warlock deep warlock stuff lately uh so i thought about creating a character for this episode and that might be a cool little extra like heron gone flavor in here oh but, okay uh, like just a warlock of dagon but, okay. Uh, but I kind of like, uh, well, maybe we can like pitch it up to the end of the episode just in like a free, free form comment. Like, what kind of flavor would you give, help your warlock player like create for this, for Dagon? Are you asking me or yeah. are you asking us? Uh, well, so, both. Like, if okay. You leave a if I were going to make a free. warlock of Dagon, I mean, I think you go, rather than Fiend, you're going to go Great Old One. Exactly. Yeah. Or uh, the. You can go Fiend too, but no, no, probably no. Great Old or, One. Or, um, shit, what's it called? We just did an episode about it. Um, the Deep One. The, the what's it called though the fathomless fathomless as a matter yeah. Of fact, yeah you're definitely gonna go fathomless I think warlock Dagan came up in the fathomless episode might have yeah um and then from there i mean obviously whatever race you choose like doesn't really matter um like you could go with something like maybe you are like from the shadow shadow over Imsmith, where it's like you come from a community that worships Dagon. that's yeah. like, a, like a fishing community and that could be elven or human or halfling or whatever or you could just go straight up like triton or sea elf or um um, yeah, some I know, I know there's another one that I'm forgetting. Uh, Triton, Sea Elf, Merfolk, Water Genasi. That's a Genasi. weird one. A, a tortle? tortle? Yeah, a tortle. Oh. I would go tortle because that's unexpected. That is unexpected. Yeah. So I go a tortle, a tortle community that worships Dagon. <laughs> he goes into the shell and comes back out, and he's a fucking like Dagon monster. <laughs> yeah, that'd be super cool. <laughs> he starts cool. firing Eldritch Blasts. Yeah, absolutely. Or like, he tucks into the shell, and then like, fucking tentacles come out of all the holes and like you know starts... There, slapping things around there is this thing Indeed. i i came up with like uh dagon worshippers of dagon like cults cultists mm -hmm. and stuff they start looking like uh the the crew of the um the flying dutchman yeah yeah absolutely so part of the ship part of the crew yeah part of the ship or part of the crew part of the ship part of the crew part of the ship part of the crew part of the ship you could also go water genasi yeah that's a cool um, one that's another one um i'm sorry i'm looking through all the races around now and like seeing everything sticks out to me as like an obvious pick um, a, a sad end for your warlock is uh, them like kind of being left for dead by Dagon saying to themselves like I could have had it all but I was rolling in the deep <laughs> I like it lizard folk's <laughs> not a bad idea oh yeah I did yeah. see I did see some lizard folk like, stuff lizard folk get up to all kinds of shit I love lizard folk they, it's one of my favorite they races they basically, in the game if you have scales you can be a Dagon boy oh you could be one of these uh, never never pronounce this in my life uh L Lokatha, you could be one of these Lokatha. I from, did see like, that as yeah, well. They are they're really ugly looking fish boys. Yeah, I yeah. mean you get the idea. Yeah, you get the idea. The shark people, definitely fish fathomless boys. though. Yeah, the fathomless is the right choice, I believe. For Dan. fathomless, you could go old one, you could go fiend, but the fathomless probably is is the best. Um, because Dagon is like not. He's like he, kind of is a he's kind of a demon lord. He's, he's got his not, own flavor going on. Yeah, for he's sure. Like, he's, he's like, like I play in the water, but I'm also a demon lord. But I'm also an eldritch being from beyond the stars. He knows he belongs, and everybody yeah, knows he belongs. Exactly. Everybody wants that taken. Absolutely. Yeah. Give me, give me some of that D. <laughs> some of that big D. Let's take a long rest, guys. All right. Wow, it's uh, it's bigger in here than I, than I thought it would be, and there's there's just like virtually no sign of chicken nuggets besides the one we have. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of people, though. A lot of people. Oh, that, Hello, that, everyone. That must be them in the middle. Yes. Uh, let's uh, let's let's stand up here. Let's get up on the table. Okay. All right. Uh, I know that some of you have heard of us. Actually, if Jeff did what he was supposed to, most almost, of you should have heard of us. Oh, so yes. surely he did. Yeah. You've heard. You've heard of yes. us. You've all been listening to the Dungeon Cast, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Uh, what episode are they on? I think it's two ninety nine. So three hundred's up coming up. Yeah. Okay. Now let me do a quick head count. It's gonna be uh, me, you, and Jeff. That's three. Uh -huh. And oh. then your special guest. Yeah, special guest. Yes. And then, that's four. Uh, that's four. So. And it's a fifteen three, passenger four. van. Yeah, we can take eleven. There okay. seems to be thirteen people okay. here. You two, you're gonna have to stay. You two in the back. Yeah. Go but back to your cells. But it's okay. <laughs> you can still spread the word. Spread the word. Stay here. We'll come for you. Yeah, we'll come Tell back. everybody we'll come to back. listen to the Dungeon Cast. Shout out to Dima Gorgon. Shout out to Dima Gorgon. Onward to the front gate. Let's go. Yeah. Jeff, you want some nuggies? You still have nuggies? I ate all mine before we even saw it. I have one more nuggie for suggestible Jeff, a good, good boy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, I'm just kidding, it's mine. <laughs> that was a good one. You're gonna be okay with it, right, Jeff? I suggest you do be okay with it. <laughs> Shout out to Team Gorgon. Oh, yeah! What, what's the hold up, Jeff? Why, why, why can't you get this door open? My keycard's not working. I don't know why. What's wrong with your keycard? No, don't let me look at it. I suggest you fix this situation, Jeff. Hey, you need to be slim with those, man. What? Those, your spell slots. We're, we're like basically out. It's a suggestion of cantrip. Have I been fucking up this whole time? No, we've been spamming short rest stuff, man. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> look, fix this situation. Look, my barcode's completely destroyed. I think I got some grease on the back from the chicken nuggies. It's a real, uh, you know oil's really bad for you, right? I'm really disappointed in you, Jeff. Hey, I'm sorry. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best I'm just here, so, man. so goddamn disappointed in you. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Don't worry about it. Shh. Whoa, the door opened. Wow, that's fortunate. Good job, Jeff. Hey, Jeff, good job. It was, wasn't me. Who, wasn't who me. was it? Who was it then? It was I. Whoa, where'd you come from? The ceiling. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, you like fucking Spider-Man down off this? Oh, that was awesome. Who, who, are, who are you? Who are you? Don't worry about it. The only thing you do need to worry about is that the homie sends his regards. <laughs> the who? The, the, the homie. Who the, who the fuck the, is that? Who's the homie? Who the fuck are you? Like, don't worry about it. I'm the homie. You know? Aren't you guys like Big Team Accordion? Yes. Yes, we are. Absolutely. We're like his biggest guys. I would say so. Yeah. At least, or maybe like the third and fourth. Yeah, we're up there. Yeah, we're top ever, tenors. Have you ever heard of the dungeon cast? Uh, yeah, I have. Um, there's secret word that soon they'll be covering Dagon, Demogorgon's best friend. Oh, we haven't heard that episode yet. No, we haven't. The homie sends his regards. Uh, what? Did, why did you just hand me a fish covered in tentacles? This looks like a big fish with uh, some uh, like fucked up eyes all over it. I I, I I just ate chicken nuggies. I'm not hungry. I got the card all greased. You up. can take this back, please, uh, out of my hands. Uh, no, that's the calling card for Dagon, the homie. Okay. He's a big fish guy. Let's go. Onward! I can see the van. <laughs> Thanks, homie, or whoever the fuck you are. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to The Long Rest. This is the part of the episode where we get deep into sleep, as deep as we can go. As deep as the Shadow Sea. Shadow Sea deep, some would say. Uh, we Dagon want, deep. We want to get deep into some gratitude right now. Yeah, absolutely. Deep, uh, deep like Dagon. Deep like oh, Dagon. there it is! There's yeah. a catchphrase for the episode. Deep like Dagon. I like uh, What the Grumsh, um, bu uh, Buff Bahamut, and his, mm. his bodybuilding... Beast body, yeah, bro science Bahamut, bro science Bahamut, oh, bro, or, or bro bu science Baphomet, bro, bro science Baphomet. Oh yeah, there we go. Hashtag deep like Dagon. Hashtag deep like Dagon. We did it. We got there. It I took... want to be hashtag deep like Dagon. We had to get deep into this episode to get that. Absolutely, we had to go so far. <laughs> well, what kind of buried treasure do you think is down there? Probably some good shit. Um, it's literally a picture of him like on a boat. Yeah, like, on a cruise liner. I I feel like Dagon doesn't actually treasure treasures. You know what I mean? I think that it. Any of the good treasures are just kind of strewn about. He he yeah, treasures sure. knowledge. He probably treasures what other people treasure. So he does treasure treasure. I don't know. But maybe not in the same way. Mm. It's definitely different. Yeah. Hey, we want to thank some people that treasure us. <laughs> From Patreon. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if you've uh, if you've come into Patreon in the last little bit, here's your thing. Here's your thing. Get ready. Will, are you ready? I'm always ready. Hey, we got an upgrade from Colin Ritzinger. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. Welcome to the tiered. Welcome to the tiered area. Yeah. Um. Oh dang. Oh okay okay hang on. Oh, I gotta watch. I gotta watch a YouTube video real quick. Oh okay. Sorry. I what? Know that's, I know that's weird. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Sorry, they just keep coming up. I should really memorize this. I hunchin. I hunchin. I hunchin. Well, say it with me, Will. I hunchin. I hunchin. I harn. This is like a very soft R in there. Okay. I harnchin. Okay. The Einhunchen druid is back. Oh, okay. okay. Squirrel okay. druid. Thank you, I harnchin druid. I harnchin. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you. It's it's lesser. I can tell, but the the third e or the second e is a three. Okay. Lesser. Thank, thank you. you, lesser. Oh thank wait. You lesser. Uh, 
Ein Harnchen Druid. Uh, we got a woo. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay, now. Thank you, Lesser. Thank you, Lesser. Uh, Daniel Marino, an upgrade. Welcome to the tiered area. There's people jumping out of that $1 into That's the 5 That's good. That's hey, good. It welcome. was Daniel? Uh, Daniel Marino. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, we got Dirty K. <laughs> Thank you, Dirty welcome, K. Welcome, Dirty K. You sound fun. <laughs> <laughs> we got Baron Eric. Thank you, Baron Eric. <laughs> and also we have Robert Kerher. Kerher. Thank you, Robert. Kerher. Uh, thank you, Robert, in a way that I do not know how to how to quantify in oh. like a soundbite. Oh. Oh. Thank it's you, that, a Robert. Lot. Thank you. you. We should, you know what? Uh, if you don't mind a little editing work, maybe we have like a little like marching do 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 with like fireworks as we're saying thank you. Eric, do you want Robert. to be the doo-doos or the fireworks? I'll be the doo-doos. Okay, do it. Do the doo-doos. <laughs> thank you, Robert. You're amazing. <laughs> thank you, You're Robert. amazing. You deserve more than whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> yeah, you thank sure you. do. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Jonah Walker. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Jonah. <laughs> Dylan Dayright, Dare, or maybe it's Dare Rit. Like it's there's no e. It's D A Y R I T. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Or maybe it's Dylon. <laughs> like, Thank you, Dylon. Like that, <laughs> like that Dave Chappelle skit. Uh, no, you're thinking of Key and Pill. No, I'm thinking of Dave Chappelle. What? The five greatest rappers of all time. Dylon. Dylon, oh, okay, Dylon, okay, Dylon, okay. Dylon. Yeah, I, no, I know what skit you're. Yeah, you're where where, you're where he's about. mispronouncing everyone's name. Yeah, yeah, no, this was Dave Chappelle. Okay. Uh, and thank you, Foxy Mulder. Thank you, Foxy Mulder. Thanks, Foxy Mulder. Hey, Foxy Mulder. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's it. All right, we're free. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for supporting us on Patreon. Hope you guys are enjoying your bonus content. And anyone else who's interested in either supporting us or bonus content or both. Uh, you can go to patreon.com and join a tier and get some sweet stuff and know that your money is going to the cause of more dungeon cast related stuff. That's right. Um, and it helps us make cool shows like Super Quest Saga, which was a, a project born of the the ability that Patreon gave us to do more things. Indeed. Uh, it is almost over, well, actually. Super Quest Saga. Yes, yes. We are recording the finale pretty soon here and possibly an epilogue if no one dies. If or no if, one ev- dies. if everyone. If, if, if at least, someone lives, at least one person makes it to the end, there'll be an epilogue. Right, and if everybody dies, so be it. Yeah, and that's the way that'll that'll crumble. <laughs> no one has died yet. Spoilers. True. Uh, not but, not you know. in seventy six episodes. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, there have been deaths, but not a character player. True that. That's very true. Um, and that's even kind of okay. Well, we're getting into it. <laughs> so, uh. We want to tell you guys about something else. What is it? What? Like Apple Podcast reviews? Yeah, let's start there. Yeah, if you want to support our show, but you don't have, you're not fiscally able to do so, don't even worry about it. Just head over to Apple Podcasts or any app that you're using that to listen to us or even YouTube. Or actually, you can't do this on YouTube, but any other app, uh, and go ahead and leave a review. Yeah, leave you- a review. Leave a rating, uh, five star preferably, um, and that helps support the show. Yeah, or leave some honest, uh, crucial feedback that we probably need. Or that. That also helps. Uh, yeah, that's, it's all good. Um, and if you are on YouTube, you can like, subscribe, and comment. Those things are all really helpful. Hit that little bell, I guess. They still do that. And uh, um, but the, Maybe. That way you get notified of our videos. But, like, uh, hey, uh, podcast people, I guess, should we mention that it's troublesome for people that don't watch the video to, like, do that stuff? I don't think... I don't think it's an issue. It's probably it's I don't probably think not it's enough people doing that for it to matter. Yeah, so because it's okay. yeah, for those of you who don't know, it we've been you... having serious problems with YouTube. They're still not paying us. We're trying to get it figured out. They're not being exact. They're they're being very vague. Um, so uh, any support is helpful. Um, but yeah, so that's that's one of the things where we're we're concerned about what might be causing the issue. But I don't think that's it. More vague than Dagan. More vague than Dagan, if you can believe it. I, it's hard. I'm hard. And not to. nearly as deep. Not nearly as deep. <laughs> you fucking surface level corporate greed, money hungry assholes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we are also on uh, Twitter, so yeah. check that out. Yeah. And other you places. find us on all social media, and just you know, search the Dungeon Cast. We will appear. We will. We will appear. Uh, and the website's almost done, probably. Yeah. And. Uh, 
what else? Are we ready to call it a game? I feel like we've covered everything. I think maybe we have. All right. Uh, but thank you. Uh, 300 episodes deep. Will, any any words you want to say about the Dungeon Cast before we call it? Um, I, There was probably going to be 300 more at least. <laughs> there probably will be, honestly. There will probably be at least 300 more. Uh, yeah, you just wait till 6th edition. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's what I was gonna say. If you go, if you go for, far enough into the shadow sea, you fucking find six edition. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be around um, doing other other projects and stuff. Um, yeah, once we're free with Super Quest, we'll be up to all kinds of all kinds of shit. I feel like, but um, yeah, let's call it a game. Let's call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. All right, everybody, get in the van. <laughs> Uh, it's more. It's really more of a bus than a van. Ah, uh, yeah. There's a lot of seats in here. Yeah, fifteen. Nice job, special <laughs> guest. Thanks for waiting for us. Indeed, indeed, we were held up, but but some homie helped us. Yeah, somebody said that they were the homie. And they helped us. They must be, cause they did help us. I have a question, special guest. Do you like fish? Um, yeah, you know, I here you guess. Go. I I do like the cooked stuff more. I don't really like the. Is roster. everyone on board? <laughs> Let me do a quick head count. Yeah, you're, uh, you guys have suggested so many things to me, uh, and I've done them all. I'm not sure why, but okay. Yes, you've, you've become pretty suggestible yourself, I'm much like suggestible Jeff here. Yeah, much like Jeff here. Yes. You've met Jeff, haven't you? Uh, yes. yeah, I've met Jeff. He's, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we're coworkers. Yeah, hi, Jake. What, what's up, Jeff? A suggestible duo, if you will. I, yeah. Special, special you, guest suggestible. I think you've heard another And moniker. his friend, Suggestible yeah. Jake. Suggestible Jeff and Suggestible special guest, Suggestible Jake. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's good. Is everybody ready to go to the studio? Oh, you're taking us to the studio, by the way, Jake. Oh, sure. Uh, is that close? Yeah, we're in Chino, right? <laughs> it's only a couple of cities up. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty close by. Is everyone ready? Yeah. One last time. Shout out to the Dungeon Cast.